Well, we're off now to check out of Mexico. Darcy's coming a couple minutes behind me because he's quickly finishing uploading the video from last Friday. Um, today's Friday morning, Friday before Christmas. We're hoping to leave Saturday night. And in Mexico, you have to check out when you're at like a major kind of port like this. So they know that you're not here anymore. So that's what we're doing this morning. And then we've got a bunch of jobs to do. Hopefully get ready, everything ready in time for tomorrow. Well, checkout went fine. We're gonna get our paperwork sometime this afternoon and then we get 48 hours in order to leave. Yeah, now we have to go back to the boat and see if the engine starts. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just have three bolts to tighten up and then we're gonna start it. I'm nervous, you're nervous, everybody's nervous, but why would you be nervous? It's gonna work. So the gasket, I have complete faith in because we have no other option. Actually, I think we can build a completely new gasket from the rubber gasket material, but I've never done that before. And that would take another 24 hours to dry. And that's all. I, need, I need a torque wrench, I really do. All right, let's fire her up. This is our engine start list. So open seacock, check. We've just done that. Just now. Check oil. We've just done that. Yeah, just pulled out the dipstick. And so now it's start engine as a team. Yvette's gonna stand by the engine kill and I'm gonna check the engine for leaks. And we're gonna run it for the first time for 10 seconds. Second time, 30 seconds. Third time, one minute. And whenever the oil looks bad, we're gonna check the oil in between. We are gonna change the oil. One, two, three. <laughs> that's 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 the wrong engine <laughs> okay reset okay port engines you ready one two three <laughs> keep trying <laughs> Stop. Okay, it's not starting, but we're just gonna keep cranking it. We put the battery charger on so the battery doesn't drop. So we're just, we're gonna get this. All right, ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, kill it. It works! Yes! Woohoo! Okay, so we've checked the oil once after the 10 second run. The oil is still good, so now we're gonna give it a 30 second run. Okay, go ahead. Engine oil still looks okay. Doesn't, doesn't appear to be any emulsified water in there. So check and check. And now it's time for the one minute run. Engine test three, ready? Three. That's engine test three done, on to engine test four now. I found a leak, this one's on me. Uh, there's an oil cap back here, right here, that I had removed that I forgot to put back. So it sprayed a little bit of oil up on here. So I gotta clean that up. That's definitely my bad, but everything else is running really well. So if that's the worst thing that happens today, man, would it be a good day. Mistakes are made. I, I, I'd never take this oil cap off ever, but it was just the easiest way to fill it with the valve cap, valve cover off. Okay, that's done. We've completed 
uh, our two minute run of the engine, oil is still looking good. Uh, so let's get to the four minute run of the engine, five minute run of the engine. Five minutes of run time. Everything's looking good. Uh, the oil looks like it's just a little bit contaminated. So we are going to do our first oil change. With this oil change happening, it's going to take uh, a little bit for the oil to all get sucked up. And the Marine is actually putting on like a Christmas dinner lunch thing where they're giving us all tamales. So let's go get some tamales. So this is a tamale. They're really young, made with corn. Tamales are done. They were delicious, by the way. We have this five gallon uh, pail of oil, 20 liters of oil that we got when we were in San Diego for a hundred bucks. So it's like significantly cheaper. Like a, a four liter, one gallon thing of oil in Mexico is like almost a hundred dollars. So uh, significantly cheaper. So we can do as many oil changes as we want. It's just a little bit big. <laughs> so this is uh, oil change number uh, two. So this doesn't. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. This is sea foam. We had a recommendation uh, to use this in our oil when we're trying to clean out the system. So now we're gonna run it for 10 minutes. We're gonna put this sea foam in first. Hopefully the oil will still be decent after 10 minutes and we can use the same oil to run it for 20 minutes uh, and then 30 minutes and maybe even put, put it in gear. So uh, we're gonna pour this sea foam in and it's supposed to help uh, basically take crudge or cludge, whatever you <laughs> <laughs> whatever I call it. Yeah, whatever you called it, out of out of the oil. So in we go. Probably should have read the directions. Do you know how much we're supposed to put in? Yeah, I'm imagining you're supposed to put in a can. Add to crankcase oil. Sea foam helps keep your engine running clean by removing harmful oil residues and deposits. Directions, directions. Yeah. Add one ounce for each quart of oil. How much is it? <laughs> How much is a quart? <laughs> What's a quart? <laughs> I don't know what a quart is, but this is 16 ounces oh. and there's three liters of oil. We doubled it. It's okay. We're going to be good to go. I, I saw I saw on the internet I saw on the internet that that we should just pour an entire bottle in because we're not running it for the full time that it's it's supposed to be in for like like in a vehicle like the last 300 kilometers before your oil change and um, we're only going to be running it for like 10 20 minutes so as per our schedule oh wait still looking fantastic so that's it I think we're we're good to go so we've done three oil changes uh, we've executed our runtime menu here with a 10 second run 30 second one minute two minute five minute 10 20 and 30 minutes and it was in forward gear for 30 minutes uh, and we followed our engine test procedure to a T so that means we are going to be Christmas time in an anchorage as long as we get a bunch of other things done as well. The water is the last thing we really need to figure out because that's kind of not working. Uh, but we are going to be in San Catin. Yeah, we just bumped into Harry and Letitia who are some Aussies on the dock and they're heading south as well. They've done a little bit more research than we have and they said San Catin's pretty nice. A little bit shorter for us so we don't have to go like overnight for a bunch of nights to get to an anchorage and we'll be able to stop somewhere in time for Christmas. Yeah, 
So, shows you don't need to plan in advance. <laughs> <laughs> just, just talk to lots of people and make friends. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's get started on this water business. As some of you may know, this is our water tank lid that we installed uh, a while ago. Uh, we've never had it like properly hooked up. We haven't really used this water tank too much um, And this is new piping that's nice shiny and new and clean that Yvette spent a long time running So it's all fresh and new and not disgusting Unfortunately with the new pipe it won't hold a prime So we can't actually use the water and now we're out of water except for in this tank so we really need this tank to work. So this is a non-return valve, so it lets water pass through it one way, but not the other way. So we're gonna um, put this in here, uh, in the hose, so it doesn't, the water can't fall back into the tank, and then the hose loses its prime. So I think it's a, that's supposed to go this way, so water travels this way through it, but can't go that way. Now we have to prime this hose, uh, and the pump is all the way up there, so it means we need to connect a piece of hose to it and put it up in the air so the weight of the water uh, pushes it down through the hose to, to prime this hose. It's a total pain, but if we just work quickly, we'll get it over with, so. Where's a... We need a piece of hose like this, but much longer. Stand by. So we've attached this line to the pipe that goes to the water tank and we filled it with a bunch of water bottles just now and that head pressure will fill down this pipe and then into the pipe that fills the water tank. So this goes all the way down here and then it usually would attach to that, that right in there, but instead it goes back up to the pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to break off the attachment right there and attach it to there, and then hopefully the water will work. Will the water work? Yes. All right, so here is the non-return valve right here, and then it just attaches right to the water tank right there, and it should suck up water from there now that we've primed this hose all the way to the pump. So hopefully when we turn it on, it's gonna work. You have to excuse the mess. We haven't had running water in three days, or any water. <laughs> Oh, come on, we had drinking water. Oh, it actually ran out. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's test it out. Water pressure first. Pump's going good. And now the tap. Woo! Woohoo! Right. Looks like I got some dishes to do. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Those rocks are getting super close to the boat. They're about a meter away, the rocks that are just under the surface there, or three feet away. It's a pretty sketchy, tight spot here, so we have to wait till the tide has gone up a little bit before we can get out. We're not quite ready to leave yet anyway, so that's all right, but when we changed spots and had to come in here, it was very, very tight. So we did that at about half tight, so we're gonna wait a little bit longer before we leave this time. I think saying tight is underestimating. I was terrified. <laughs> terrified and scary. <laughs> So because our engine tried to be a water maker this week, we didn't have any time to actually put together our water maker. So we want to fill up our tanks with water just so we've got some to get us through the next little while until we get onto the water maker. This is about the fifth trip or 15th tank up or jerry can I'm going to fill up. <laughs> you Would you like some help? Uh, it appears there's a lineup. Hello, Harry. <laughs> oh, so you make her carry them. <laughs> oh, you didn't see the mess I did just now. <laughs> I was helping. <laughs> so this is solar powered, so on very cloudy days it doesn't work. Luckily today is nice and sunny. Got to chuck it in at the right angle. <laughs> there we
Well, we think we're just about ready to go. We've done a lot of jobs today, last minute things, took a bunch of packaging off the food because we don't know when we're going to have ru rubbish bins around next. We've cleaned up a bunch, hooked up the solar again because we unhooked that while the surround was built. Um, we filled up a bunch of water, lots of lots of things. Super busy, heads going crazy, but think we're ready to go. Um, we did some last minute checks, the bilges, bilge pumps are working, um, checked the steering, everything we could think of to do and make sure the lines are all running in the right spots and yeah i think we're ready to go we're gonna have, go have a last shower because we don't have one on board oh come on we have <laughs> we have like the shower in a bag showers that's true that they will heat up in the sun down here so we've got one shower we can have at some point one shower each <laughs> one shower each yeah and then we're off exciting so excited i can't wait sense of adventure yeah Showers are done, we've turned all the electronics on, the tide is nice and high. And Speak for yourself, the tide's nice and high, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's higher <laughs> than it was before, <laughs> but still very tight. We're just going to go say goodbye to a couple of people on the dock, and then we're off. just left Ensenada and we went to engage the autopilot and there's no autopilot. So after like 20 minutes of troubleshooting and trying to figure out what's going on, uh, we have determined that this little piece that allowed our wind meter to work makes the autopilot not work. So we had to uh, take that out. Uh, it took a little while to do um, just to figure out that was the problem. Uh, and now we have to retest the autopilot, like re-engage it, calibrate re it, <laughs> recalibrate it. There yeah. you go. It won't work until we do that. So currently we're doing donuts <laughs> around in the bay here, doing circles and loops and speed tests and stuff so the autopilot will work. But now we don't have any wind. Luckily we've got our handheld meter. We can use that for now. Stick our arm out the window. <laughs> yeah. And we're we're uh, yeah. Now we have to go like super fast, and we can't can't see anything in front of us. <laughs> and uh, we have no chart. And the boat's going to do a bunch of zigzags. <laughs> oh. Good old calibrating the autopilot. In the night time. <laughs> <laughs> we were just going to hand steer the whole way, um, but I figured that, you know, it, it had to be something that was working. So we realized the only thing we've changed was that little piece. Yeah. So we took it out and straight away it started, turned on, and yeah, so... No wind again, I guess we didn't fix that problem. Yeah, yeah, I guess we didn't fix the wind, put it back on the board. Um, but on the plus side, the autopilot is now working. And it's been calibrated. And so now we can stop doing circles and zigzags. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and start heading to where we need to go. I mean, hand steering wouldn't have been that bad. We are both kind of tired, but yeah, it wouldn't have been that bad. I think it would have been fine for this, but um, the fact if it was something broken with it and we're just leaving Ensenada and we've got <laughs> weeks and months ahead of us, I'd rather know yeah. that it's working. Doesn't that give you a nice warm feeling in your tummy? <laughs> All right, well, disaster averted, except we don't have any wind. Oh, the wind meter is working.
I don't think it's accurate. But it's might, not it saying, might be accurate. Yeah, it might be accurate. It seems to be accurate. Well, apparently the wind meter is working now. And I'm at a complete loss. We basically haven't done anything now to change it and it seems to be working again. I'm at a complete loss. We took the fix it the fi fix thing that fixed it out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. We won't trust that wind. I don't think just right now. No. We no. can test it with our handheld wind yeah. meter. Double check it. Oh, thank God we have that handheld, eh? Yep. <laughs> Man. All right. Well. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing new to report. Just uh, on our tuned. way to San <laughs> Stay tuned. It's a really beautiful, nice night out here. The, the moon's out and it's shimmering on the water. You can see where you're going. Yeah, it's, it's a really good night to be back out on the water, I think. Nice and calm. And yeah, it feels really, really great. I'm so happy to be out here. Gonna make it to an anchorage for Christmas. We like setting little goals. We made it to Mexico for Day of the Dead and now we're gonna make it out, finish some of our boat jobs, the most important things, and getting to an anchorage. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see what, how it is, see what Mexico has on offer for us to explore. Pretty excited to start doing some swimming and snorkeling and scuba diving and free diving and fishing and yeah, just exploring Mexico. That's why we're out here. It'll be nice to get a little bit of downtime and relax after the weeks and weeks of boat jobs and going out on the hard in Vancouver and all the issues in Alaska and the issue with the engine last week. So it'll be nice to relax a bit this holiday kind of week. Talking of issues, in terms of the autopilot, it's not fully working again. It can keep us in a straight line, which is good, but not doing any of the turns or the actually following a route that we've put in. Um, we're hoping it's because it couldn't calibrate properly when we were doing all the turns and everything for it because it was a little bit wavy where we were doing that. We didn't realize we had to do it, of course. We unplugged the new little part that we had got in to try and make the wind meter working. And when we realized that the autopilot wasn't working, we thought, well, that's the only thing we've changed. So let's take that out and see. And it, it did seem to help the auto, it, the autopilot did turn on after that, but it's not fully working. The wind, however, initially said 70 knots when we took away that special part but now it does seem to be correct. So who knows at this point? <laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> well, I'll check in with you again tomorrow and hopefully we'll make it to the anchorage before nighttime tomorrow, which is Sunday night or Christmas Eve. The sun's just coming up. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. Uh, it was a bit of a dark night for me as soon as uh, I took over for Yvette around uh, 3 o'clock and uh, <laughs> the moon kind of went away and it was all, all dark. Uh, had radar on, had AIS on, but now it's just it's awesome. Beautiful sunset. Oh, Yvette pulled a monster shift. We were both exhausted and, uh, and she volunteered to, to stay up, uh, watch the autopilot and everything uh, and it's being a bit shifty. It's it's going into like standby mode, kind of, and doing this weird thing with shadow drive. And uh, uh, we were both tired, and she she uh, she volunteered to stay up, and then she pulled a huge shift and let me sleep. So I'm like completely refreshed. Um, I got a, a good maybe three and a half, four hours of sleep. Uh, so I'm gonna let her sleep in as long as she wants to, uh, and uh, have breakfast for her when she wakes up. But man. Is it a gorgeous morning out right now? Stay till the morning, tell me you want it. You know I go on and on, cause you're too important. I'm honest, too honest. No, if you touch me, I'm gone. Just say the word and I'll give you a Well, 
I'm back on shift. Had a nice sleep, nice and calm. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit now, which is good. When, just before Darcy went down to have a sleep, we put up all the lines. We've got one fishing rod, and then on the other side, we've got, I don't know if you can see off the back there, just in front of the fender, we've got um, that green line and then the black thing hanging over the top of it. That's a hand line. And then we've got another hand line on this dingy davit hop part. So we've got three lines out, triple the chance of catching a fish. Stay to the sun. but it's been such a beautiful day sailing. We're almost at the anchorage, so it's about time to pull in the lines and wrap up the sails. But yeah, it's been an absolutely magical day out here. So I was reeling in and I ended up catching a fish. I don't know what kind of fish it is. Hmm, can you turn it around a bit, see its colors? chart. Okay. It's either a bonita or a skipjack tuna. But I think we're gonna let this one go. It's just a little guy. Alright. That was fun. Just as I we were just saying that we hadn't caught anything all day. Now we have. And on the sail. We're just trying to figure how close we can get to the beach. We can see the waves breaking right in front of us. Neither of us surf, but we might surf tomorrow if, if we can get close enough to take the paddle boards in. This is exciting. This is our first Mexico anchorage. Happy holidays, everyone. We've made it here to San Catine Anchorage, just in time for Christmas. It's Christmas day. <laughs> yeah. We have our Christmas setup here, <laughs> our tree, our nice fireplace in the he background. He wanted the fireplace. I'm like, that's not a Christmas thing. We go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this no. is perfect where we are. Fireplaces for Christmas are a must. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're making pancakes for Brecky. Might have some of this Irish cream I bought in Ensenada. <laughs> I'm a gentleman and I will be drinking a bottle of peach schnapps. <laughs> Gotta stay respectable. And then I want to have a big Christmas lunch like we do in Australia. And I want to have a big Christmas dinner. <laughs> so it's going to be a fun time. We just wanted to make this extra video uh, just to show you guys how much we appreciate you. Everybody who watches, uh, we just appreciate all the support so much. So we put in some extra work, stayed up a bit and made an extra video. So. Yeah. And we were pretty happy because our engine was working and we made it here. So yeah. we love it. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays.